seen my face in a while, but that do not matter because we're here to talk business, specific business, trade deadline type of business, okay? I'm over here at school once again. I'm in the library, big chilling, and then all of a sudden, I, I see a James Harden trade. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about the winners and losers of the trade deadline. Now, I know all your favorite YouTubers be over here doing that, and I decided to go ahead and jump on the bandwagon. Have you seen those views? Anyways, of course, we're going to talk about the more recent trade, the star-studded trade, the trade that we've all been kind of knowing about would happen, but at the same time, there was a lot of uncertainty behind it actually happening, and that is Ben Simmons and James Harden, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets, and just the craziness that was going on. Darren Mori, I give you your props. You are that man, you are him, and don't ever let anybody pressure you to do anything ever again. That's what I've learned watching this entire situation. So, basically, the Brooklyn Nets have to be winners, in my mind. The Philadelphia 76ers, they have to be winners. No one got worse from this trade. Now, theoretically speaking, could you say that the Brooklyn Nets got the worst player? Sure, but at the same time, Ben Simmons fits much better and caters to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irvings and guys like us, Seth Curry now and Patty Mills and I don't know what happened to Joe Harris. Maybe he come back, maybe he don't. He fits to all their needs. He fills in the gaps, bro. He literally fills, he's like a sponge. Soaks up everything that they need. And as for the Philadelphia 76ers, oh my god, oh my god damn, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, when I was thinking about Harden going to the Sixers, I'm like, yeah, that's a cool idea, but really I'd want them boys to go ahead and wait and trade for someone like a Dame Lillard because I think Dame is the better player at this point of his career. But hey, that's neither here or there. I could be wrong, I could look stupid, I could look foolish in the next two, three weeks or maybe two months if the Philadelphia 76ers won a championship. But... Automatically, when I saw this trade, I was happy as hell. You know why? Because Ben Simmons' MVP type season is not gonna go to waste. I believe that him, Harden, Tobias, uh, Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey is still on the roster. Tyrese? That's a W. You can't tell me nothing else. That's a W. Now I'm going over this like just on a surface level. I think I'm gonna go ahead and stream later on. Uh, tonight or something like that. I don't really know. Yeah, actually I am going to stream. So before I continue on with this video and give you guys my losers, I gave you two winners. Now I'm going to give you two losers. I need you to leave a like on this video, okay? So on to the next trade that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the second biggest trade of this trade deadline was Tyrese Halliburton getting traded away to the Sacramento Kings. I cannot say that anyone really saw this coming. It is the most WTF move that I've seen in a long time. The Kings don't have any type of consistency or really, in my mind, brains or logic in that for an office. Like, I just, they just leave me speechless all the time. But the other day I was watching Richard Jefferson. I, he's like one of my favorite personalities when it comes to in the sports field. He said, why is everyone surprised? The Kings are going to do what the Kings do, which is dumb stuff all the time. So, of course, I'm super happy for the Indiana Pacers uh, for the longest on this channel, bro. I've been calling them the most mid and boring team in the entire NBA. No one has anything to look forward to on that team. Or at least had anything to look forward to until Tyrese Maxey popped up on the scene and Chris Duarte popped up on the scene. And then they also have, they still have Miles Turner. And uh, that's a winner, of course. The Indiana Pacers, they're a winner. Another... Well, I'm supposed to be talking about losers right now. This is all off the dome, bro. Like, I, my mind is just on 10, and this is just what the trade deadline does to someone like me, bro. So, okay, Indiana Pacers winner. Anyways, the Sacramento Kings. Oh, my God, what are you? You're a loser. I know you. I understand you got DeMontis Sabonis, and Sabonis, theoretically, right now, is the better player. But when in, in terms of, like, just logistics, De'Aaron Fox is older. De'Aaron Fox hasn't had a good season. De'Aaron Fox has not shown much progression at all when it comes to his shooting. De'Aaron Fox is more expensive. And the Kings just look like a more fun basketball team and a better product to watch when Tyrese Halliburton is running the show, point blank, period. No one can refute that. But hey, you did what you did. You have, like, no shooters on your team, but I, I, does that really matter at this point? So tough luck to that. And also, I guess that means that they really like Davion Mitchell. I knew that. I knew something had to give. Buddy Heels, Davion, De'Aaron, Ty, that, like, th that's just too much. That's a little bit too much. And I'm hoping that Davion Mitchell turns out to be something really nice for the Indian or for the Sacramento Kings. Because if not, then 
this is going to be one of the worst trades in NBA history, in recent NBA history at least. So they're another loser. Another loser that's fresh off of my mind that I can think of is, oh yeah, my arch nemesis. All the Atlanta Hawks fans arch nemesis. I'm just kidding. That's what the media try to pertain or try to portray the, Ma the Dallas Mavericks as to... You know what I'm saying? The NBA landscape. But no, we really do not like, we don't We don't feel any type of way towards you guys. The Dallas Mavericks did the most head-scratching, like, whatever, okay, weird, okay, bro, trade ever. They traded away Kristaps Porzingis for Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie ain't been that good this season at all. And Kristaps Porzingis has. He's been, he's a much better player right now. Well, that don't really say too much because Spencer last season was just on the same tier of player as... Chris Osprezingis, but that man like tore his old, his whole ACL. So so far this season, let's go ahead and look up his stats. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing! I just put in the wrong password. So let's look up what's his name again. Oh yeah, Spencer Dinwiddie stats. I know they kind of ugly. I ain't gonna lie. There have been rumors of him and Bradley Beal not meshing well together. Uh, this move is he's shooting 37% from the field. Oh my God, that is disgusting. And 31% from three. And he's shooting 81% from the line. He really has not looked like himself at all this season. And obviously, he's still trying to recover from this tour in ACL. I don't know what the Mavs see in him. You don't free up cap space. You don't get, like, I don't, rem I don't remember seeing any draft capital. But even if you did, it's not like nothing. It's not a big W. Like, the only reason why this could make sense in my mind is if you are done with, well, Tim Hardaway Jr. is done this season. So they do need some help on the guard position so I can understand that kind of but there were other options you could have gone you could have slid for a Dennis Schroeder or some sort you know I just think this is not a good option for them I'm trying to make sense for this for the average but this just does not make so much any sense so this is just an L I can't make sense out of it bro and as for the Washington Wizards the uh I don't know what's going on in Washington and I'm pretty sure that if you were to ask them what was going on they wouldn't know what the hell's going on either so that's also, I don't want to say it's an L, but like, bro, you have Rui Hachimura, you have Kyle Kuzma, you have Christoph Sprzingis, you have Tom Thomas Bryant, you have Daniel Gafford. That is like six bigs, and I, I, I may be missing someone too. I may be missing someone. So I don't know. Like, the Wizards are just weird. I'm, I can't call this an L because they got a bigger, a better player, and out of all the players that I just named, or all the bigs that I just named on the Washington Wizards, they got the best player out of the deal. Point blank, period. Okay, so let me go ahead and pull up my phone, see the rest of these winners and losers. Uh, let's go ahead and just say it right now. The Boston Celtics, I ain't gonna lie to you, I was kind of jealous when they went ahead and traded for Derek White. My Atlanta Hawks, they made no trade. They made no trade, and a couple of weeks ago, if you're a hardcore Hawks fan, <laughs> Travis Schlenk was pretty much saying that moves are going to be made. And guess what? No moves outside of Cam Reddish were made. So, I don't know how to feel about that, but the Boston Celtics just got a really good deal. They traded away a first-round pick and Josh Richardson in exchange for Derek White. Derek White is a fantastic defensive guard, and also he's pretty nice offensively. That's why I love that trade for them. Absolutely love it, and he's the exact type of player that they need. The Boston Celtics are about to make a run the second half of the season, and they are a team that you wouldn't really not love, that you wouldn't love to see in the playoffs. So, I'm going to leave that at that. So, they're a winner as well. Now, uh, loser. How can I say loser without spelling the Portland Trailblazers? <laughs> I mean, you what? Like, bro, if you want to hit a lick, hit it on the Portland Trailblazers. They don't know what they're doing at all. That's why, like, in my mind, I'm like, yo, maybe with the way that the Portland Trailblazers are facilitating their trades and the type of value that they're getting back on their trades, why wouldn't Daryl Morey just go ahead and trade for Damian Lillard instead? But... That conversation really doesn't matter because they got James Harden without having to get rid of Tyrese Maxey. I'm still talking about the James Harden trade. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit more towards the end of this video. But long story short, the Portland Trailblazers, that's a, like a major L. I don't know what you're doing. They saved up maybe like 61 to or $60 million uh, during, they're gonna free up $60 million, something like that during this offseason. But let's be real, who the hell going to Portland? I'm not going to Portland to play with a 31 Damian Lillard, bro. I'd rather go to at least 20 more. I'm oh, not 20. That's cap. Okay. At least like 10, 15 more other places than Portland. I don't want to go there. But in NBA history has a super talented star went ahead and signed with a random team like Portland or like the, uh, I don't know, I, 
like the Phoenix Suns or the Atlanta Hawks or the like bro it just doesn't happen it just doesn't happen and of course, like a lot of people can see this from a million miles away. You're not special if you can call this. Dame Miller is gonna get traded, and it's just like, bro, when this happens, like you, you, you could have got, you could have gotten a, a stockpile of assets, but you didn't. You failed. You're incompetent. You're pathetic. I have to talk about another winner. I almost forgot about them. The Los Angeles Clippers. Uh, they just did really good. I, I just want to leave it at that. Something that I will touch on is the New Orleans Pelicans. The Pelicans just. I ain't gonna lie, like, a couple, like, when they first got Zion, and then Zoe and Ingram and all of them were on the scene, I'm like, yo, these boys are lit, it's really lit in New Orleans, and the scene's turning around, and then they go ahead, Zoe gone, Joss Hart gone, and I'm like, damn, is these boys really lit? Are they really on the scene? And now, bam, they got CJ McCollum, so have Ingram, and then Zion is doing whatever Zion is doing, no one really knows. And I'm just like, damn, maybe these boys are really getting lit again. Now... I ain't gonna lie, like, they're, they're an interesting team, and I have to give them this W. <sighs> Is that all the teams that I'm going to be talking about right now? I ain't gonna lie, I'm so happy. Oh, yeah, the Detroit Pistons got Marvin Bagley. He finally got moved, but uh, I don't think that's really interesting to say. I mean, anybody could have seen that from a mile away, too. And, uh, yeah, man, the I love basketball. I just love basketball, and I hope y'all love the basketball content that I've been putting out. Um, obviously, the YouTube video has been slowing down. I've been over there on Clutch Points making videos on their TikTok, on their Instagram page, and all of that type of stuff. So, go ahead, if you see my face on Clutch Points, leave a comment, okay? Leave a like. Run the numbers up whenever you see me. Run the numbers up in general, yeah, but when you see me, oh yeah, best believe, better show love. And that's terms of this YouTube channel, what's going to be going on. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and stream later tonight. Honestly, I want to do that. That sounds so fun. And I'm going to be posting on my second channel soon. I have an interesting video essay coming out. And just know that I'm up to something and I'm plotting. And as for this channel, uh, what's going to be happening to it, I, I don't know if I said it in my last video, but uh, it's going to be like a draft-based channel, young players, same old stuff. The reason why a lot of y'all came here for. So don't worry about that. I'm, I am going to be just a little bit more consistent still in school. You know what I'm saying? I got a job now. It's whatever, but... Uh, yeah, man, this trade deadline was insane. Leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I really do appreciate y'all, and until then, I'll get right with you, but please make sure that you make your day great. I'll see you, boys.